what is up guys Gail right here welcome back to the youtube channel for another don machi memoria freeze guide and today we're going to be talking about the blacksmith and equipment now today i was actually supposed to do a video on team building but unfortunately due to time restrictions i couldn't do it and i wanted to give it time and effort as well because it's going to be a long video it'll be at least a 20 to 30 minute video easily whereas this crafting guide it's not gonna be too long at all i feel like and it's super easy to explain so i thought you know what let me make the blacksmith guide right now something that's super easy for you guys to understand and leave the team building to another day where i can take my time with it as well as get you guys the best guide possible for team building and don machi memoria freeze now if you guys go on to enjoy this video hit that like button subscribe to the channel comment down below what would you guys like to see more from the channel i'm obviously uploading some osts some stories as well will come in the future but along with that you'll be expecting guides weekly videos on like live streams and live stream information you know uh, information on whether you should summon or not and stuff like that of course record buster and uh, undertale skira guides as well as war game guides will be going up as well now let's talk about the blacksmith all right so you unlock this around 710 effectively right so you get the access to being able to purchase weapons of course you want to try and pick up these hestia knives as well you can only buy one effectively but you know they cost way too much so you should ignore them right now you get anyways one of each for free anyways like for example i already have two in stock because i bought both well i bought one extra magic hestia knife i haven't bought the extra hestia knife yet but basically you get one one of each anyways for free so ignore that what you want to look at is the crafting now i've already mentioned how you should be navigating your menus here basically so if you're looking for a certain character's weapons which is what you should be doing you go into cha change this thing on the top right so instead of clicking regular well click regular it'll switch to the unit tab and then you can go to say lily ruka and you can craft her specific weapons now that's what you should be doing because the main part about this equipment system in Danmachi is trying to try and get the unit effects going off because if you apply let's say this ballista robin on any other character it will just not work because the stats will be lowered you won't be able to take advantage of the attributes that are there the the affixes basically they won't be making any use effectively so you want to just try and focus on crafting weapons for the characters you have now certain characters unfortunately aren't available so if you look at the collaboration characters say for example for Glob goblin slayer's weapons you can't make goblin slayer's weapons anymore you have to wait until the rerun comes around which is a troubling point because sometimes reruns don't come around that often right and uh, you want to just try and craft those weapons for the collaboration characters when they come around now of course right now there is no collab going on so you can kind of relax but if there is a collab going on while you're watching this then you probably want to make sure to try and craft these weapons as soon as possible so that they don't disappear because trust me as somebody who owns toka and uses her in record buster but doesn't have her weapon it's a struggle in all honesty i'm i don't know how two times the the data life collab came back two times even three technically i think because there was an extra rerun as well i didn't craft her weapon at all and i don't know why i just don't know why i didn't craft her weapon at all um so you want to try and craft that weapon as soon as possible it'll just be handy super super handy but that's the main part of crafting weapons you don't really need much at all of course the main thing you want to also look out for is that they all have very very specific uh items and crafting materials you need which we'll address in just a second but yes that is how you do weapon crafting now let's go over to the armor side of things now there's a lot of stuff here in the armor section that is quite interesting you have certain gears here that decrease uh, agility but increase dexterity guard and endurance these two web uh, uh these two armor pieces they're really good for uh, stages like record buster basically but in my opinion i personally prefer using glorious armor slash anklets now we'll come on to those just a second for pvp your war games and so on and so forth you ideally want to craft either breastplates or you want to craft gl glorious anklets now glorious anklets help you get ailment resists basically here so you want to try and get those effectively going because you're going to face a lot of ailment teams and on top of that record buster enemies so your riveria brevis finn 
Kotaro, they all inflict some form of ailment and you want to try and counter that. I think Finn is actually the only one that doesn't inflict ailment if I recall correctly. He, he might inflict slow, but it's not something you should worry about. Slow, slow in my opinion is not something you really care about when it comes to Record Buster in all honesty, personally to me at least. Your focuses should be on stuff like Stun Res, Sleep Res and Seal Res. Those are the three that are very, very key. So when you're crafting these Glorious Anklets, focus on those Apexes primarily. Now, you also have these codes which basically give you extra resistance to elements and they come in handy for certain stages like for example Reveria stage where she does use uh, elemental based attacks, same with Finn as well. But again, it depends on your power level. I feel like higher end players have come to a point where they can easily get away with just using a glorious anklet for a lot of these stages, even against Riveria, and just uh, ignore the fact that they're getting elemental damage inflicted upon them because of how units have progressed so much since the start of the game, right? So the focus is breastplates and glorious anklets. Those are the two gears you should be crafting. Now, for glorious anklets, you need buster medals. Buster medals are obtained only if you do record buster consistently and you get uh, buster medals as a reward for ranking in record buster. So effectively, what you're being told is do record buster. And that's about it. I've told you guys this in the beginner's guide as well as in the iris guide. Here's another reason why you should be doing Record Buster anyways. Breastplates are a little bit more easier to collect. You can only farm Gold Orb, Rare Cloth, and Rare Wood. Now, I mentioned you need certain items to craft these weapons, right? And you can only get them from the shop if you go to the Special Exchange and the Materials Exchange. So you need basically these items right here. These blue Moonstones, I like to call them. I don't know the exact name. I'm not going to lie. I've forgotten it. I've not had to farm it in a very long time, I will admit, because I farmed a lot in one day, and I'll tell you how in a minute. But you can get every character's items in here. Everybody's character items are literally in here. So if you've missed out on anything and you need to pick up something, just go over here, use these materials, and you'll go from there. Now, to get these materials and just generally, you know, the rare cloths and stuff and whatnot, you want to go all the way to the crafting quest and do the EX stages. They're level 80 quests. They only cost you one stamina. You can literally just send your units and keep tapping play again once and once and once and once and once and once. So you're, you're going over and over again, basically, and just trying to get that stamina going. It doesn't cost a lot. Like I show, like once you're at a decently high rank, like I think rank... 50 or something you're already at like 100 ish stamina or something like that or a little less than that so you can easily smack out like 50 runs in one shot and you'll be getting it done you'll get a decent chunk of uh, moonstones as a result of it so you shouldn't be having any issues particularly with this in my opinion now of course uh, that is not it that is just not it there's so much more to go but that's how you craft the weapons and get them ready so now we've crafted your weapons what's the next task what do you have to do next right the next thing you want to do is well upgrade them well actually before you do that let me craft one weapon and show you exactly what happens so say i want to craft a weapon for let's say mm, let's say i want to craft a weapon for i guess mikoto let's say i want to craft a weapon for mikoto i don't have any weapons for her for example and she just got a unit right she got an anime unit like last week basically right she got the wind magic unit so i have to craft this magic kotetsu now i crafted as you guys can see there's a range a 190 to 230 magic attack range along with the durability they both scale to the same amount so you don't have to worry about the durability being low but the magic attack being high they're exactly the one and same so i craft this weapon right Let's see what I get here. Hopefully it's something good. Now, if the gold bar were to go rainbow, it means you've got the perfect weapon. But right now, I've got a weapon that's 199 and 872, which is pretty bad. And the affixes are actually really good. So I'm not gonna change them too much. This is actually really, really good. Um, so what we have here is basically a weapon uh, for... Sorry about that sorry about that <laughs> unfortunately we had some uh, messages coming through which they'll be blurred on your screen but i had to address them um all right so we had that weapon come up right that 199 weapon with 270 uh what or i think it was 872 durability right so i have that weapon i don't like it i want to rehammer it basically i want to go to rehammer and you can do it for both weapons and armors if you don't like their attributes and stuff so if i were to go to magic and i think it was a sword right or it was a katana sorry it would be a katana and if I were to go all the way down here, and yeah, you can see the Magic Kotetsu is right there. I have 
300 secret hammers which is a lot i will admit you can get this more so when you do dispatches and you know you do some other stuff as well uh for example undertale Skira gets you some you get some from just doing missions and stuff like that so you want to try and do your dispatches as a result of that as well as some other things the crafting quest also drops a couple of those as well mind you so if you're doing your crafting quest you'll be getting this no problem at all so i want to rehammer this because i want to get it to 230 right so I go up. Now it's at 203. So it increased only barely. But the beautiful thing about Danmachi is now what they've done is it won't go any lower than this. It will not go any lower than this. So it, is, it can roll the same amount, which means it could have gone lower, but it's at least not going down. Now it's gone to 221, which is great. I can keep doing this again and again until it gets to 230. Now I'm gonna probably leave it as is after two more attempts. But the, in my opinion, this is probably one of the better changes they made. It was only recently that they made this change, I think, as well. I think it was only like a couple of months back because before this, it would go down. It had the potential to go down and look there, 230 already. And I've not had to do too much at all. And I've got a lot of weapons like that that have had that happen to them. And I've had to just keep going again and again and trying to fix them. Now, if I were to go to the attributes rehammer, it's a little bit less, I feel, because you just use this one so much more because you're trying to get the rate right affixes. Now, for a magic character, I always personally prefer to go magical crit magical basically so you have the opportunity to rehammer and get any one of these three um, stats basically right agility and magic in my opinion as well as crit are the three key ones you want to get you want to get match 30 you want to get agi 30 and you want to get that extra 15 percent crit you anyways get a guaranteed 15 percent crit on every weapon for free anyways but you want to try and get that uh, magic and agility as well as the extra crit now of course i said that that was fantastic for me the one that i had previously but i wanted to try and see if i could get something better so i'm just gonna do two more rolls here and see what i can get now this is great right i have two magics and i want to keep them locked now of course you can do that now it, it's another change that they made very recently is that you can lock the attribute so i can lock this magic 30 right now and put it there done but i've run out of it how do you get more right you can get more by basically using a hundred mystic bellows consistently and you get one locket for every turn so it's sort of like a pity system basically so for every 300 mystic bellows you use and you don't get the right attribute you want you will be able to lock up an affix guaranteed now it may seem expensive but the thing is mystic bellows are so easy to come by that it's not really something i would say is an issue and as you saw there i literally got the same role as before which is hilarious thank you game but there you have it that's how you re-roll your stats as well as your attributes slash apexes right now the next thing you want to do is upgrade your weapon you want to upgrade your weapon and these things are very easily found via events you can farm them with uh, your event currency and pick these up super super easily so you want to do that and you can upgrade it then you smelt it and you upgrade it and you smelt it and you upgrade it basically so you want to get your weapon to 60 all you need is these whetstones and smelting stones which you can get from the event like i said so i'm going to show you guys exactly where to get it from in the event so if i were to go to home if i were to go to quest if i were to go to the event and say jump into part three i'll go into part three because it's the easiest and the fastest this i can go in here and scroll down and as you guys can see here you can get the smelting stones and the whetstones now the one thing to note is that the large smelting stones and the large whetstones are limited only they are limited to i think seven per event so right now in parts one two three you have 21 smelting stones available so it is a little bit limited in that regards but it's not really an issue if you're going to be playing for a very long time so there you have the upgrade side of things now I want to go even further beyond. I want to go even beyond the level 60 mark. And that's where equipment ascension comes into play. This is something that they've recently added as well. I think it was last year when they added this. And this is where you will be upgrading your weapons max level. Along with that, you get a further ascension attributes as well after each point. So at step two, step four and step six, you get god rate on attack minus 10%, penetration damage plus per 3% and crit damage 3% very 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 vital especially if you're trying to get that extra bit of damage against record buster 
or against you know other members of the game basically other fellow players uh, in war games right so you want to try and do that now this is where it's a little bit more harder to obtain this is only for veteran players primarily you can farm it as well if you want to well i say farm basically you go into the seventh zone and you want to clear these stages basically so you want to clear two of these stages one gives you the armor version for the ascension and one gives you gives you the weapon side a lot of players will be only able to do hard, normal and hard maybe very hard is very very difficult and you only get 15 turns to deal the most damage against these enemies now you want to make sure that against these enemies you take stun anklets because they will stun you and you want to try and get as many attacks in as possible but i think for most players you want to just try and go in normal and hard and the big thing about these seven stone stages as well is that they're all elemental based hence why they've given you what they are so it says boss multiple dark zone dragon so what we're facing off against that stage is that we're going to be facing off against a dark type enemy with multiple enemies so it's an aoe stage it's not a single target stage you want to take in any uh, units that can do aoe's and they are light because these enemies will set up resistances for every other element so it is practically difficult to then deal damage with any other character so again to reiterate this is mainly for veteran players this is meant for players who have a lot of units in their teams a lot of element party elemental based parties you know mono uh, lightning mono fire mono water and so on and so forth so this is a bit trickier but I'm pretty sure a lot of players should be able to at least do normal and then maybe hard potentially as they're progressing. Once you're at your end game is when you will do very, very hard. So there you have it. I think that is the majority of the blacksmith, I have to say. Obviously, there is also a repair point because they lose their durability as you guys saw. But you can easily just repair all items for a certain amount of ballast and they're fixed basically. So you don't have to worry about it breaking multiple times and all that means it's gone away forever it's just that you have to make sure you repair it occasionally whenever it tells you to that oh your durability is gone please repair the item so there you have it but overall the main things you need to note about uh, crafting and blacksmith is make sure you give your web uh, uh, your units the right weapon and the right armor depending on the content you're going up against the next thing you want to do is make sure you farm the crafting zone when you're early on in the game because over time the materials come back at a regular pace right they come back at a steady rate so that you don't have to go and do crafting zone every so often but you want to just make sure that early on in the game you have the initial amount you need to be able to craft the weapons and armor you need the next thing you want to do is make sure you do the events so that you can get the smelting items required to upgrade and level your weapons and the final thing is of course seven zone seven zone is where things get a little bit tricky but more often than not most players should be able to do it as they progress through the game and get higher and higher and have a better better teams to use against those enemies basically but there you have it there's a small guide on the blacksmith and crafting let me know if you guys will have any questions in the comment section down below i will be answering any and all questions once again appreciate all of y'all for watching this video i will see y'all in the next one take it easy everybody Bye bye